Get ready to dive into the deep sea adventure of 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. This 1954 movie brings to life the classic tale of Captain Nemo and his incredible submarine, the Nautilus. As you watch, get ready for some surprising, funny, and even sad moments that will keep you hooked till the end. One scene that might stick with you is when the crew encounters the mysterious giant squid. It's a thrilling moment that will have you on the edge of your seat. And speaking of characters, there are plenty to choose from, but who's your favorite? Is it the enigmatic Captain Nemo, the brave Professor Aranax, or perhaps the adventurous harpooner Ned Land? Now, as you enjoy the movie, think about your own experiences with it. Do you have a cherished memory of watching it with family or friends? Or maybe a personal connection to the story? We'd love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the journey under the sea with 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. And remember, there are plenty of surprises waiting for you, so keep watching. In 1954, a fantastic film hit the big screen, taking viewers on a thrilling journey. This adventure, based on Jules Verne's classic novel, is known as 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Set in the 1800s, the story follows explorers who meet the mysterious Captain Nemo and his amazing submarine, the Nautilus. What makes this movie special is not just its exciting plot, but also its groundbreaking special effects that were way ahead of their time. 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea played a crucial role in the history of movies, pushing the limits of what could be done on screen and inspiring future filmmakers. In the movie, Kirk Douglas wanted a scene where his character, Ned Land, interacts with two women and gets into a fight to show off his action skills. He wanted to make sure his character was exciting and lively different from what was originally planned. The design of the Nautilus, the submarine in the movie, was changed a lot from the book to make it look more interesting for the audience. Instead of being simple like in the book, they added more details like windows and fancy outside parts. James Mason, who played a role in the movie, was really good at acting. Even if the movies he was in weren't perfect, people always praised his acting. Critics really liked him a lot. James Mason, known for his roles in various films, including the original Salem's Lot, acted alongside his wife, Clarissa K. Mason, in Age of Consent. However, Mason's autobiography, Before I Forget, faced challenges in finding a publisher due to its perceived politeness. Additionally, Peter Laura, recognized for his work in cinema, sold Alfred Hitchcock the screen rights to Secret Agent. Laura, a collector of valuable story properties, amassed assets estimated at $350,000 by 1944. These anecdotes shed light on the diverse experiences and endeavors of the cast and crew involved in the film. In his first movie set in the Wild West, cowboy Stan Paulson helped Kirk Douglas learn horse riding for his role. Surprisingly, Walt Disney, who was known for picking the right actors, wanted Ralph Richardson to play Captain Nemo. This film was important for Disney because it was one of his earliest TV projects, airing for two hours. Before this, Disney's TV shows were either shortened to fit in an hour or split into many episodes. This longer format showed Disney's growing confidence in TV. The movie, based on a famous book, was loved by audiences because it had adventure, cool technology, and creative ideas. By paying attention to small details and telling stories in new ways, the film made the ocean seem real and excited viewers of all ages. Kirk Douglas, voted the 36th greatest movie star of all time by Entertainment Weekly magazine, starred in the movie. The world's first functional replica of Captain Nemo's diving helmet, built by Pat Reagan of Volcania Submarine Hawaii, is on display in the Florida Keys History of Diving Museum in Islamorada. Alongside items from the film, he restored an authentic Disney Crown Top crewman's diving helmet to operational condition and dived it in Hawaii in 2008 making it the only piece of diving gear returned to service since. In a Hallmark Playhouse radio adaption aired in 1951, Captain Nemo was voiced by Raymond Burr, Professor Aranax by Louis Jordan, and Ned Lamb by Tom Tully. Kirk Douglas, famous for his roles in many movies, often wore special shoes to look taller on screen. He really cared about seeming tall, and this became a fun topic among his friends in the film industry. Once, his fellow actor Burt Lancaster decided to play a joke on him while they were filming 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Lancaster secretly took away Douglas's special shoes, causing confusion and laughter on set. But Douglas didn't find it funny, showing how serious he was about his acting and maybe a bit about his looks. On the flip side, Peter Laura had a different background. He studied under Sigmund Freud and Alfred Adler in Vienna, bringing a unique perspective to his acting career. Laura's early training in psychology added depth to his performances, making the characters he played more interesting. 
This mix of psychological insight and artistic talent made him stand out in the world of movies. In 2005, Kirk Douglas faced a new challenge. Despite doctors advising against it, he decided to get knee replacement surgery. It was a risky choice, but Douglas went for it with determination. Luckily, the surgery worked well, letting him continue his career with more energy and movement. In Hollywood history, Kirk Douglas is remembered not just for his big presence on screen, but also for how he faced tough times. From funny moments on set to overcoming health problems, his story shows his strong spirit and dedication to acting. This story, part of Hollywood's history, reveals the real life side of the entertainment world and the people in it. Each tale adds depth to the ongoing story of movies, reminding us of the human stories behind the scenes. Kirk Douglas's journey, with its ups and downs, successes and challenges, remains an interesting part of this ongoing story of creativity and strength. Kirk Douglas, father of Michael Douglas, acquired both stage and film rights for Summer Tree after Michael was dismissed from the stage production. He generously offered the rights to Michael, who then starred in the movie. Meanwhile, Peter Laura proposed a film adaptation of Crime and Punishment to Harry Cohn of Columbia Pictures. Cohn agreed under the condition that Laura would star in Mad Love and be loaned out to MGM. Laura's distinctive accent was later parodied in the 1990s on the animated series Mega Man, where he voiced the character Cutman, possibly inspired by Sidney Greenstreet's character in The Maltese Falcon. These ventures added layers to the careers of both actors. In Hollywood history, there are intriguing tales about famous actors and their roles. For instance, in a well-known spy movie, an actor turned down a part that later went to someone else. Another actor, who starred in a classic film, made a big change in his life by quitting smoking. Unfortunately, he faced a sad event when his father died from lung cancer. On a brighter note, the same actor received a special award from a university, joining a prestigious list of recipients that includes former presidents and other talented individuals. These stories offer a glimpse into the lives of actors and the ups and downs they experience. In 1987, at an event honoring Kirk Douglas, Burt Lancaster mentioned that Douglas was known for being quite difficult to work with. He joked that Douglas himself would admit to it, and Lancaster would agree. On the radio in 1947, Peter Laura hosted a show called Mystery in the Air on NBC Radio. Laura had a unique voice and was good at acting, which made him popular on the radio. Laura wasn't just on the radio, though. He also appeared in cartoons made by Warner Brothers. He played characters who had funny interactions with Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck. Laura even lent his voice to a fish character in a Dr. Seuss cartoon called Horton Hatches the Egg in 1942. These two actors, Kirk Douglas and Peter Laura, had different talents but both left their mark in their own ways. Their experiences behind the scenes added an interesting layer to their work in films and shows.